Hi everyone, my name is Michael and in this video I will explore how we can use caching, CDN caching or browser caching in combination with GraphQL requests. There is this idea that GraphQL is actually uncacheable and I will show you otherwise. By the way, we are running workshops at multiple conferences throughout this year. If you want to spend two days with Martin and me, diving deep into GraphQL, exploring how we can build a GraphQL server in hot chocolate, or how we can build awesome web applications with React and Relay, join us. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So I already prepared here a little project, the typical project I use with books and authors. For this demo, we don't really need a lot more. And I added one more thing to my project file here. So if I go in this project file, you can see that I have added another package here. And that's the hot chocolate caching package. Okay, let's have a look at how we can set that up. So in order to use caching with GraphQL, we want to leverage the cache control header of HTTP. That's the standard header that you use with anything that you serve over HTTP to indicate to the CDN or the browser how it can be cached or how long it can be cached. In order to configure that, we go here to the program CS. And since we have added the package, we can just say add cache control. And this will add the general feature support to our GraphQL execution. The second thing we need to do here is to use a custom pipeline. So by the default, we would use the use default pipeline in hot chocolate. So if you do nothing, you're actually using this execution pipeline here. So in order to use the cache control pipeline, we need to say use query cache pipeline. And this pipeline would look at our resolvers, inspect them if they have cache control data and include that in our response. I will show you as we go forward. So with these two things set up, we can go to our query type and put a cache control header on the query type. So we use this cache control attribute here and then we indicate how long this result can be cached. So we put a 10,000 on top of this and then this is ready for caching. My server is already up, so I can use Banana Cake Pop. So in Banana Cake Pop, we can just add our simple query here, book and title we are selecting. And remember, we put on the book resolver actually the cache control header. And if we run that and look at the transport details, then we can see that we have a cache control header here. But actually, by default, GraphQL is using a post request, which is not ideal for CDNs to cache that. But you can serve GraphQL over GET, or actually the queries could be served over GET. So we could take Postman, for instance, and then craft this kind of query. It's the same GraphQL server, but now I'm crafting the query here as a query parameter, and then send that. And you can see I have the same cache control header here, the same body also, but now it's fully cacheable. But actually, this is not nice. If you think with variables and so on, it wouldn't look nice. But combined with the feature called persisted queries, this becomes really nice to use. With a persisted query, we would no longer have this kind of UI here. We would have either an ID and would refer to the query as something, for instance, as a name, but typically as a hash, and then could chain in after that some variables. So much nicer to cache. But with Hot Chocolate 13, we could also introduce a nicer structure where we indicate here, we want to have the persisted queries and from the persisted queries, we want this query ID here. And then we could chain in the variables. So typically the variables is a JSON object which would be chained in like that. But with Hot Chocolate 13, you actually can lift that up. So what is inside of the variable object would be lifted. And then you could have whatever you have in the variable box, like this, test foo. And this is now a nice cacheable URL for your GraphQL server. Okay, so in my demo, I'm not setting up persisted queries. If you want to know how that works, I have a video on that. So I recommend you watch that and then you have a better idea of what persisted queries are. But even without persisted queries, we now already have a cacheable query here. But there's a problem. Not every property that I have in my GraphQL queries are equally cacheable. If I'm querying here for book and title, maybe that is 10 seconds. I annotated 10 seconds on book. And these 10 seconds 
seconds are inherited from all the fields here. So everything is now cacheable by 10 seconds. But I could actually dive in deeper and let me go to banana cake pop and let's dive in deeper a bit. For instance, to author and name. And if we rerun that, then you can see it's still 10 seconds. So how can I change that? So how can I make that content dependent? And that is easy. Let's go back to VS Code and introduce another resolver here. I have this books extensions and this introduces a new resolver to my book type here. And this resolver at the moment just returns a string just for the concept here. And you can see this is only five seconds cacheable. So the issue now is that my outer resolver actually is 10 seconds cacheable, but the inner thing is just five seconds cacheable. So if we rerun that query, I'm going back to banana cake pop here, we run that, still 10 seconds, you can see that. But the moment now I'm diving into something and execute that, then you can see that we are only cacheable 5,000. Because what the cache control feature does in Hot Chocolate is analyze the query that we did and then determining the least amount of cache time that any resolver exposes. So by default, we would inherit the cache time from our parent. So we would inherit the 10,000 milliseconds from book here. But when I override that somewhere, for instance, in that something resolver here, then it will take the lowest time that I discover in my graph. So if there's another field here that has even less time, then this would take precedence. So the least amount of time that I find in my query graph would be taken for the cache time. So there's two more things. First, you can see here the public and public means that this is cacheable by a CDN, by a public shared cache. We could also make it privately cacheable and say, okay, this can be cached, but only in the browser. For instance, if there's authenticated data or whatever in our request. So how would I do that? Let's go to VS Code and look at this cache control header here. And then we could indicate that the scope of this cache control header or the scope of the data we are annotating actually is that we can only cache that in the browser only privately. So if you run our query again, then you can see that now the query is only cacheable on a private cache because there's at least one field that cannot be cached on a shared cache. So maybe we are authenticated now or whatever, we are accessing here authenticated data. You can see the moment I'm removing that, we are again publicly cacheable, so cacheable on a CDN. You can also override the scope in a custom request interceptor. So if you inherit from our default HTTP request interceptor, so you could override the cache scope for the request there. For instance, because you detect that you're signed in and if you're signed in, have a signed in context, you always want to override that to private. So the cache is really flexible in how you use that. One more thing, no feature in Hot Chocolate is good without its default. So you can override our defaults. Let me go back to VS Code here and you can do modify cache control options. And in there, we can just change the defaults. So we can, for instance, say that we don't want to apply default cache control times to our reservers or even define a default time for all our fields. So I could say by default, all our fields are cacheable, let's say for 10 milliseconds. Now all my fields are 10 milliseconds, but let's do 20 just to show you the effect here. And then we take away this guy, go back to banana cake pop, run our query and you can see without annotating the thing, we now get 20 milliseconds and it's private because private is the default but you can override that. Awesome. What do you think about our new cache control feature with Hot Chocolate 30? Sound off in the comments. If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This really helps us grow this project further and reach even more new users. And with this, I'm out.